You know, the creative side of it, to me, is the most important thing. Yeah, you know, we're not... I wouldn't say we were a mixed studio, even though we've got extremely high quality monitors and can mix very, to a very high standard here. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, the, the recording that we can do is as good as anywhere, I'd say. Our priority was getting the sound right. And so I looked for a space that sounded good. And the, the, the people that come here, immediately they walk through the door feel the relaxed atmosphere and feel the creative vibe that is there. I mean, just looking around and seeing that, you know, all the, the stuff that's hanging around, it, you know, you can't help but be creative in this space because it, it doesn't feel like an office. And it, it and every, we're, you know, the staff here and myself, we, you know, we try and be as friendly as possibly can and, and it's fun. And if you're in a studio and it's not fun, it, it just seems so wrong to me. So, you know, we try and create a really relaxed atmosphere and that's what I think the band's like. But sonically as well, because we've got such unusual live rooms to say, you know, like natural live rooms. So they're actual real rooms that have got a real sound to them. So your ear hears that and knows that it's a real sound. It's not a digital reverb. It's not a room that's been built and soundproofed specifically for sound because that sounds fake as well. We can put them in a room that's got a really nice reverb already and we don't have to mess around with, with like digital reverbs and trying to get it to sit in the mix because everything's been recorded in nice rooms and so it glues them all, all the parts together really nicely and sounds like one complete band playing in one room together. You know, and that's the sort of that's the, the sort of records that I like listening to. Whereas some people like listening to ones where it's all like processed and heavily done. I mean we can look at a Pro Tools session that we do here and we hardly ever use any plugins when we're doing a mix because already the sounds you know, the, the sound is 90% is there before we've even started the mix. When we set up the studio, I expected it, it was going to be a great space and it was going to be really good to work in, but I didn't realise how good it was going to be. And so there are certain elements, things like the control room, we were going to put where the drum room was going to be, which is a lot smaller room. But now we've put the, we, we then had a, a studio designer friend of mine come round and have a look round and say, oh, why don't you put the control room in there? Um, and we did that and went up with it. And now it's like a hundred times better than I thought it was going to sound. And because we've got these amazing monitors, um, we can hear everything really, really clearly. So we don't need to process it. We don't need to like EQ the hell out of it because we can hear what it's doing because the monitors are so accurate and then so clear. And then we've got such great live rooms and that combination you can't lose with because you're not trying to make it sound good for your speakers. You know, it just sounds good anyway. And so most of the time when we find that we leave it, the better the final thing is as well. You know, we don't try and destroy it by EQing it just to make it sound good on a pair of NS10s. At the back of the control room, we've got two small booths. We've got um, one which is an amp room um, and another one that is a vocal booth. And the amp room is, is quite dead, but it's got like half of it is brick wall, half of it is like softened wall. So it, it's quite neutral space as a sound and we get a very direct sound out of the amps in there. So we put our guitar amps in there. We've got a vocal booth, which actually isn't quite finished at the moment, but it will be finished next week. Um, and again, that's gonna be quite a dead space for those producers who come in and want that original dead sound. But we probably, probably won't get used because we've been here for like nearly three years now. And whenever we've tried to do recordings in the small booth, it never sounds quite as good as doing it in the big room because it's got that natural reverb on the back of it. Um, we've also got um, a drum room, which we could, is big enough to get like maybe three drum kits in it. Um, and we've tuned that with um, diffusers on the wall, so it's, it's still got life to it, but it's very direct. So the kit sounds really crisp and direct. But then next to that, we've got this massive wooden hall, wooden floored hall with brick walls and a, and a pointed ceiling. And that's got an amazing natural reverb to it. And when we put the drums in the drum room and we open up the doors into the big live room and put ambience in the big live room, we get this incredible drum sound that just, again, glues all the individual elements of the drum kit together. And as soon as we put that ambient in, it just creates this amazing sound. We've actually had, we have done sessions where we played, put full bands in the, in the big room and we've been able to mic that up and there's been separation between everything, just making them up mm. as a normal band without any diffusers or walls or anything like that. So, you know, it just it's just a natural space. People go in there and they sing and they say, 
you know, it's a pleasure to sing in that room because it accentuates the tone in their voices and, and you know, and, and there's, a, there's a couple of grand pianos in there and just playing their piano or acoustic guitars, it just sings with the instrument. So this is the control room, we've got the SSL desk, and we've got a rack of equipment, the PMC monitors, two inch tape machine, selection of guitars behind you, uh, basses and guitars and baritones, and I'll show you into the uh, um, rest of the studio. So we come through here into the drum room. Okay, so we've got an amp room in here where we mic up uh, guitars. So yeah, this is the drum room. Uh, this is Mark Winterburn, our engineer. Um, his first session he ever did for us was the Plan B um, on Ill Manners. So the very first session he ever worked on was a number one album. So uh, I'll leave Mark to tell you about the drums. Uh, yes, yeah, so just a basic kind of basic setup here today. I'm just in the middle of kind of sorting it out still, so I might chuck up a couple more mics, maybe like a, a second outside kick mic or something, a couple of rooms. But it's just um, it's a pretty much standard thing at the moment. It's kind of top and bottom toms. Uh, kicks double mic, it's got an in mic in there. Um, we don't really have to kind of tend to bang up too much more than what is necessary because the, the, this is a really good uh, really good room for a, a dry drum sound really. It's very, it's very tight but it's not overly dead. Um, so there's still a lot of snap in there and a bit of life that you need and it uh, complements well with the, the other live room that we've got just through there. Um, we leave the doors open, have ambient mics in there and then you get that kind of gunshot snare thing going on and it uh, complements each other really well. So we get a, a really good sound out of it with a very little, very little hassle really, which is uh, really good. We'll go through to the, uh, the big room next door. This is the room, is the reason why this studio is here and why it exists because of this space. As you can see, it's like a huge space. We've got two grand pianos in here at the moment. We've got our drum kits waiting for our band to come in and come and get. So if you want a studio that makes you sound like you're playing in a band, playing live in a real room, in a real space, then Edge Studios is probably the place for you because we've got the equipment and the sound that you can achieve that with.